I got a bunch of stuff to do today. So uh, as a warm up, I've already started. I said, well, I might as well get it on video. As a warm up, I'm going to I'm going to attempt to make a hunting point style or come up with a hunting point style. Uh, 125 grains for another project I'm working on so here we go yeah this will be a good warm-up I got my grain scale uh, so I'll, I'll keep track of my progress it's it's a uh, it's actually not that easy to uh, come up with matched hunting points but once I get a pattern in stone or chert it's much easier so that's what I'm going to do I used to have a hunting point pattern already set up Or some hunting points that I made a while ago, but I sold all of those. But I, I want to come up with another design. Yeah. Those are just simple triangles with straight edges, kind of like a Cahokia style. I'm going to do a different style. Or try to. Let's see. Okay. So I don't know exactly what it's going to look like yet. We'll just kind of go with the flow. This is a, a Texas heat treat. I took off the the part that was a little bit different in consistency. That'll make it a little bit easier to, to nap this. Because the rest of this seems to be all pretty much the same. Okay. Yeah, it's quiet today because, for one, it's Sunday, and there's no not much going on outside. And number two, I don't have the space heater on. It got sunny out, and when the sun hits the top of the shop, the temperature in, in the shop increases by about 30 degrees. Yeah, three, zero, 30 degrees. So it was, I think it was 37 degrees out earlier. And it was like uh, 75. So it's more than 30, 30 degrees different. It was like 75 in here in the shop without the heater going. Yeah, amazing. As long as there's full sunlight, not partly cloudy, but full sunlight for at least, I don't know, four to six hours, it warms up at least another 30 degrees in here. Yeah remarkable anyway i don't have the the heaters just sitting there i think i have it set yeah i gotta set to turn on if it gets below 50. it's like uh i guess it's 55 degrees yeah right now which is good yep if i start feeling like this is bugging me at least I won't be overheating yeah yeah I start to overheat if I start to feel like the flint napping is not going well mm -hmm. we might hear some church bells in the background they uh, those church bells are chiming quite often it's a Sunday yeah but that's about it that's the only thing I anticipate there's noise in the background okay is this a good lighting or is it is it getting washed out let's see yeah, I backed off the lights as much as I could so they're not directly over overhead this might be getting washed out but what I mean is it's just you can't see the flake pattern unless I do this. Oops. But anyway, uh, 
that's the that's the thing about using light colored shirts. But I have a bunch of this in my quest to find you know white shirt. I pick up this stuff. It's not quite bright enough to be the kind of white shirt that I need. But I said, oh, that might work. So I picked up a bunch. Yeah. Where did I pick it up? That didn't happen. Yes, yes. A friend of mine said, you want this? It's going to need heat. I said, yes. I need some light colored shirt for something I, for my own personal use, because I want to make some reproductions of real points. And those are white shirt points. Anyway, I don't know what kind of shirt this is or where it's from. I just knew that it needed heat. Because I started napping it at the nap and I'm going, uh oh, okay. Some of it's good, but most of it's pretty bad as far as nappability. Unless you heat it. And it's really good now. It's not glossy or anything, but it naps really well. And I think I took it up to 350. Uh, or 375. Just below 400. I'm careful these days with the heat treats. I used to just stick them all in at 400 back in the day. Or something like that. And um, I also, when I first started heat treating, I didn't have a thermometer or a temperature gauge stuck in the side of the turkey roaster. So I didn't really, I didn't realize that with an insulated lid, the, it actually heats up hotter than the, the dial indicates. Uh, on my turkey roaster, my old one, the, the temperature was 50 degrees higher um, during cold weather and almost 100 degrees higher in hot weather from what the dial indicated. So it go, mine went up to 450, but in the middle of summer, I, I maxed it out at 450, and the actual temperature with the temperature gauge, it would show 550. Yeah. But when I first started doing the heat treating... I would use the roaster gauge, and even though it had, it had an insulated lid, I assumed it would it would just shut off at that particular temperature. But the temperature setting dial on the turkey roaster doesn't is not a thermostat. It doesn't shut off when it reaches that temperature. No, uh, that that dial assumes that the lid is not insulated, and in the factory they set it. All right, they test it and they set the dial according to how you're normally going to use it. So I didn't know that in the beginning, and I think I was overheating a lot of my original rocks. Moral of the story is I was overheating my original heat treats in many cases, and I was getting some failures. And I was saying to myself, it's not that hot. Why are they? Why is it failing? It's so finicky. But yeah, I finally learned that I was heating them too much. Okay. Now I got a temperature gauge. I got several temperature gauges. I got a new turkey roaster. I'm going to be setting it up soon to do bunches of heat treats. Yeah. Bunches. All right. I haven't set it up yet. So the heat treats that I am using right now are from my old stock of heat treats. Okay. So hunting points don't need to be extremely thin. They just need to be extremely sharp. In fact, it's best not to have extremely thin hunting points because if you're, especially if you're stalking whatever you're shooting, 
You don't want the arrowhead to accidentally bump up against a branch and break the tip off. Yeah. You don't want to break the tips off of your arrowheads just by walking around. Which does happen if the arrowheads are really thin. Yeah. How do I know? Everybody? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. What was I hunting before? What did I start hunting? Oh, what, are the, what have I shot at with bow and arrow? The only thing I've shot at, well, I've shot at deer and missed a couple of times with the bow and arrow. And I said, no, this is not good. The deer are too smart. They duck and they, you know, they dart away. I'm shooting at distances that are too far anyway, like 40 yards too, too far for me anyway, because I didn't have that much practice, even though I shot a lot. Still not enough practice to do uh, shooting out in the field at moving targets, potentially moving targets. Yeah, and the deer, I missed the deer because they moved. Uh, I also shot a bow and arrow at a deer or I shot an arrow at a deer recently when I went hunting uh, last year. And the arrow was, went too high. I said, yeah, this is not good. I need a lot more practice. Yeah. So, I am going to be practicing this summer. Or as soon as I can. I don't know where I was going with that. But that's my plan. I'm going to come up with another, a new hunting point style that I can just make from memory, no problem at all. A strong type that won't break if I hit it, hit it up against a tree or whatever. I know where I was going with that. Uh, what have I hunted? I've hunted deer. And rabbits and just little varmints. Yeah. For little varmints, you don't need a big old arrowhead like this. No. Yeah. You don't need any, you don't need anything. You just need a little bitty arrowhead for varmints. But for deer, you kind of need a larger point so that uh, the deer will bleed out faster. Yeah, I just broke this. Uh, it'll bleed out faster with a more cutting edge to the arrowhead. And that kind of thing. And it's, it's heavier, so uh, many times it just feels better to shoot an arrow with a, a nice uh, weight forward type of balance. Yeah. All right, so what is this now? What is it at this point? There are different stages to this, you know. Let's see. Come on. 240 grains. Okay. So, uh, what I used to do was I, I would make preforms like this and stash them like this at 240 grains. Let me take a measurement or a series of measurements, you know, 200 grains or so just to start out with and stash a bunch of these, you know, make about a dozen at a time. It only took me four, 15 minutes, right? To make a dozen is like three hours work of work, worth of work or something like that. Okay. This is an inch and three sixteenths. So I still got room because, you know, the hunting point's got to be about an inch. Seven eighths in some states is good. Still good. But about an inch is best because then it allows you to resharpen it once or twice. Yeah. So this is going to go down to 125 grains which, or half. So... Uh, I'll be taking the thickness down, so that the the, uh, the measurements. Let me get the measurements. A one and three sixteenths 
by two and a half inches by uh, five sixteenths inches thick. That's 200 and whatever grains that was. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now the next stage. Thinning it down. That's where most of the that's where most of the weight is going to come off on this particular piece. And uh, to get it down even further, I just uh, either take some off the base or take some off the tip or both. The length doesn't matter too much on these hunting points. Uh, uh, most states have a broadhead type of regulation on arrows for hunting. <clears throat> if you want to shoot at animals that don't have a restriction, you can use any, any size or weight. But for like deer, they usually have a regulation for the weight and the width not the weight but the width and no barbs yeah they have a regulation on the on the width and uh, a restriction on barbs they don't allow barbs in most places okay mm -hmm. all right so let's see let's do a thinning pass Got the edges ground down pretty good. Let's see. Someone asked me about files. Where do you get them? Where do you get good quality uh, files? Because they wear out fast. They get dull quick. I wish I knew because mine wear out and get dull quick too. So I just buy new sets. You know, you got to spend about 10 bucks a month on your files if you do a lot of napping. I don't know how much these sets cost. Uh, they range in quality. If you buy the cheapest... They don't last very long. If you buy some better quality needle files, they last a little bit longer. But it's, it's not much of a difference. But, you know, it's best to have the best quality. Yeah. Less maintenance that way. You don't want to always be heading off to the store to buy a new set of files. So, yeah, I had that question. And it was a good question because I don't know where to get long-lasting diamond grit needle files i just go down to the hardware store yeah i do i have ordered them online or off websites which is good too because you don't have to go to the store you can just order from amazon or whatever and they just deliver it straight to your door you know that's for the lazy people <laughs> and i am one yep Now, how thick should it be down here? That's a good question, too. Uh, I think the, the width of the shaft, in most cases, for these hunting arrows is going to be 11 30 seconds of an inch, right? So it's got to fit well into 11 30 seconds of an inch shaft. Now, I think they go down to 9 30 seconds as well. There's two main diameters, 11 30 seconds and 9 30 seconds, I believe, on wooden arrow shafts. If I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think those are the two major uh, standard diameter if you buy them. Now, if you make them, you can always make them any size you want, thickness near the tip. If you carve them down yourself or put them on a lathe or do whatever, you can uh, increase the thickness at the tip to where it'll hold it even though your arrowhead is really, really thick. But if you're like if you if you order those Port Orford cedar arrow shafts like many guys do, I think it's eleven thirty seconds of an inch in diameter for the uh, hunting points hunting shafts that will accept these types of hunting points. Okay, the heavier duty type. For the medium to larger game. Mm -hmm. And I'm not an expert at hunting by any means. No. My my principle 
uh, objective to making this stuff was just so I can have reproductions. I just wanted to shoot and learn how to make reproductions of historical stuff. Or, you know, you know what I mean. Something in the archaeological record. My original intent on all of this stuff was to make reproductions of the real things that existed in the past. Yeah. Hunting was just a luxury. And, a, you know, if I can go hunting, fine. If not, fine. It's not... It's no big deal. All right. I got this... Uh, I got this fairly thin. Let's see what it weighs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 180 grains. Yeah. So I got to be careful as I take this down further. It, it dropped like 60 grains. So it's got 60 more to go. Actually, I don't have to be that careful. But uh, it's best to be careful because it's so easy to take too much off. Just like tillering a bow, it's so it's so easy to mess it up when you're working down to the right weight. Sometimes you take off a little bit too much, and you miss your target weight on the bow by five or no, even by three pounds, and you get all ticked off. I know I do. I want a 50 pound draw and I remove too much material thinking that I'm being fast and really good at what I'm doing and I, I end up three pounds underweight, 47 instead of 50. Dang it. All that work in the tillery. I missed the weight. Same thing happens with these. All that work trying to get these things looking just right. And you miss the weight. And you go, dang it. So, got to be careful. Carefully trim it. Mm -hmm. And the width, too. I had one and one eighth. So, I lost a sixteenth. For those of you who want to know how much you lose doing these passes, I lost a 30 second for 30 second of an inch off of each side on that pass. That's the beauty of indirect percussion. You can shoot large flakes off of little bitty platforms without losing much width. Now, as I start pressure flaking, it's going to take a lot of width off. Relatively speaking, you'll see. With me, anyway, I lose more width from pressure flaking than I do from percussion flaking. But only with indirect percussion. With regular percussion, I lose a lot more width than with pressure. If it's just regular direct percussion. That's how you lose most of your... I mean, the, the technique that removes the most width is the direct percussion. Yeah. That eats through your edges quick. But indirect percussion, just little bitty platforms can yield good results. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to wait until later, I think, uh, to thin down the base to fit into a 930 seconds diameter shaft. Because I don't have one within five seconds to, to use on this. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut that up. I'll cut that up. Let's see. I am going to uh, get a four shaft down to that dimension, put a notch in it, and then you know fine tune this later. So I think I'll what I'll do is I'll get this down to 130 grains. So that way I have five grains to work with down here on the or, you know, 100, 140 grains or something. I won't get it all the way down to 125 uh, just so I can, you know, mess around with the thickness on the base later. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to 
gonna start pressure flaking here in a little bit. I gotta take off some of that mass right there. Did it work? Did it do it? It's doing it. This is a sweat stage because this is where it breaks doing the fine tuning. doesn't want to do it it doesn't want to cooperate you, you gotta be really careful yeah it helps if you have cooperative stone so if, for those of you who clicked on the video because you want to know how to make hunting points or watch someone make a hunting point uh, I'm using good quality stone yeah it is a heat treat. I heat treated it uh, for this particular stone at a particular heat. I just can't remember what it is. <laughs> but yeah, it takes some, it takes some experimentation to get the right heat for the for the particular stone. I can tell that I used just the right heat for this because it's very cooperative. Whereas before, I remember trying to nap this stone and it was terrible <laughs> now does it matter how thick or how thin it is let's see how do I say this does it matter if you thin this way down by mistake uh, it does kind of matter yeah you don't want you don't want it to break down here at the base in the haft you want a nice solid haft connection and you don't want it too thin down here how do I know I don't know I've had them break off right there and I don't even know it's broken when it's on the arrow but it uh, while I'm out in the field I've broken them before down here because they snap like that in the half, but you don't see the break until you look at it closely, especially if you got to wrap it with a lot of sinew. But yeah, I've had it crack all the way across because I thinned it too much down there and it was all wobbly. But I didn't, you can't tell just by looking at it. It looks fine and you shoot it and it's all wobbly like that. I don't know if it makes too much of a difference, but you know, it might. You might get lucky and it didn't matter you know still still penetrated well but i wouldn't take that chance you know don't take the chance of making it too thin down at the base that's my advice yeah is it good to put a notch down here in the middle of the base that's a good question that I often ask myself, should I do it or should I not? Because a lot of artifacts have a notch. And uh, they must have done it for a reason. And the best that I can think of for a reason is a reason that I didn't think of and I resisted for a while. And that is that it's good for the glue joint. If you put a notch in the middle, it actually allows you to have more glue in there, which is better for the joint. For that glue joint to have more glue in there i'm thinking that's probably a that's probably why they did it so that more glue there'd be more surface area for the glue to attach to yeah and it was not my idea because i resisted that for a while i just thought it was tradition you know it was an anti-pattern you know, something that really doesn't work all that well, but they did it anyway because it was just something that they have always done. Anti-pattern. Yeah. It's something that people do even though it's not that great of a solution. It's just something that's always done. I thought that's what it was, the central notch. I thought it was an anti-pattern. But no, I'm finally coming around to the idea that it's 
it's best for gluing. Okay. What is this now? 144. So we're getting down really close. And when, once I pressure flake this, I think I'll be very close. <laughs> Where is the other one? Yeah, this is the one. Beauty. A subscriber sent me a, a pad, a wood and leather pad with a slot in it. <clears throat> I'm thinking of using it, but it's too flat. I need it to be more domed. Although this is barely domed, I need to take some more off of this size here. Uh, this is not domed at all. So I, I break points on this type. I need to, you know, sand it down a little bit, I guess, and make it more domed. Otherwise, I would use that one that I was given. Yeah. Because it has a nice slot. Two slots. And one on each side. It's a nice pad. But I, I don't use it because it's not domed. I'm afraid to break the points on anything except the domed pads that I normally use. Alright, so what am I doing? I've got to just make it more regular and sharpen it up. I don't have to sharpen it down here. In fact, on my hunting points, I like to dull this back here. The entire base, just dull it down. Uh, I'm going to change the shape here in a little while, though. It's going to be like a fishtail. If I have enough room, uh, if it doesn't get too close to 125 grains. If it's already too close to 125 grains, I won't have enough meat on here to do the fishtail look to it. I'll have to do it on the next one. Ultimately, I think I'm gonna ha I'm going to make like fishtail looking hunting points. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, I like that look. You'll see. So. Uh, that pass was just to get it so we're, to where it wasn't so thin right there. Because right where I took that thinning flake, it got really thin. I don't want it that thin. So I'm just making it regularized. I'm just regularizing it. Okay. And it, it does matter how nice this the base is when you go to haft it. So it doesn't hang up on the sides of the notch. You, you don't go, hey, it won't go in. There's a bumpy spot. You don't want to have to be repairing it later. And go, okay, it's all done, but there's a lumpy spot. I can't get it to fit right in the slot. And you hit the base and it snaps in half. You don't want that when you're trying to work on your arrows. How do I know? I don't know. <laughs> Okay. Here we go. Ooh, that doesn't work. There it goes. And do this first. Because I don't know about you, but I've snapped them in half just working on the pressure on the base. Yeah. So do this while you still have some good thickness there because it might get thinner later when you're doing pressure or it might it might get more weaker in the middle. You want to do this first before you weaken the middle from the pressure flaking on the sides. Yeah. Sending in flakes from the sides, it does weaken it. All right, let's see. I'm trying to get this too perfect. But it's the pattern. I, the pattern actually has to be perfect. The other ones don't have to be as perfect. The, the actual ones that you are going to shoot. In fact, it's best not to spend too much time on those. Because then you don't want to shoot them. You go, man, all this time. I'm going to save it or sell it. Yeah. You end up never putting it on your arrow. Because they're too pretty. 
But the pattern has to be nice and pretty and almost perfect. Okay. got to be careful with this part. Don't want to get too narrow. Okay, I'm approaching the inch. I'm an inch and one sixteenth. So I don't have much to work with as far as that goes. Which is all right. I don't need to work. I don't need much to work with. Yeah. Nice. Heat treats are so nice. Oh, yes. Okay. There's the bell chime. Church bell. How many chimes? Six. Six p.m. Eastern. It's going to start making that little tune very soon. There'll be a little tune on the bells very soon. I open the door a little bit so we can hear
Is that it? That's it. That's it for the, the tune on the bells. Yep. No? You got an encore? I missed the weight. Yeah, I went down below. It's 118 now. Oh well. I'll have to do another one. Well, I'm just going to finish this out. The way I want to. And then I'll weigh it later. See what I got. I'm gonna put a little fish tail on it. Yep, this one came in under. Oh well. You might say, well, that's not how to teach us. You didn't do it right. <laughs> Yeah, it takes, it, uh, apparently, it's going to take more than one try. Yeah. But I'll, I think this will get down to 100 grains. So I'll have a pattern for 100 grain point. It's not a total loss. Build up my collection of different patterns for hunting points. Like I said, I sold them all already. Okay. I think the bells have stopped and the neighbors are out in the yard. I don't want to hear the neighbor. Mm -hmm. 
as we'll do a little more sharpening. And then I'm going to put some notches in. Yeah, the uh, thinning of the edges took off more weight than I thought. I'm a little rusty on judging how much weight is removed by these things. Yep, that's my excuse. I'm rusty. Why is this notch so low? I don't know. On the hunting points, I like to put the notches kind of low. Yeah. I don't know why. It's not like I have a lot of experience with how they penetrate on deer. I just put them low. Now, in some states, I think that the, the notches are not allowed either. Right? It's got to be one continuous edge. Oh, I think I messed that up. Too low. Let's see. Yeah, I have enough width to fix that. Okay. All right, where, where does it go? That was too low. Still might be too low. Anyways. Yeah, I depend mostly on glue anyway for these. For the hunting points to keep them on the shaft you don't really need notches but i'm going to put them in that way i can see how much the notches take away from the weight so when i do the next one i'll plan ahead and i'll know how much the notches will remove in weight from the arrowhead Okay, come on. No? Yeah. He wants to be stubborn. Slightly expanding because it looks cool that way. Yep. Yep. Slightly expanding notches. Are we there yet? No, we're not there yet. We're almost there yet. Okay, now the edge is going to be sharp, so let's just do a final pass on the edges. I'm going to just regularize it with the spatula tool in this direction and then take off some thinning and sharpening flakes in the other direction. When you use the spatula tool, it kind of puts a bevel on it. On the other side, it kind of bevels it. Bevels it a little bit. So that way when I grind it, well, I don't know if I'll grind it. 
Uh, yeah, I probably need to. When I grind it, it's the edge is set up really nicely for flakes in the other direction. Or I'll just leave it beveled. It's it's sharp when I bevel it like this, so I don't really need to do flakes in the other direction. This is sharp enough, so yeah, I'll just skip it. That way it'll make the video shorter. Yeah. Just slightly bevel it with the spatula tool, flip it over, do the same thing. It gets all the dull spots off, and it's really easy to do. It's just downward pressure. There's no complicated thinning or anything like that. And if I can see lumps, I'll take the lumps out. Oh, maybe. Yeah. See, there's a, there's lumpy spots. I suppose I can take some of those down. Scratch it back. Yeah, come on. Now I'm starting to obsess. Come on. Yeah. It's fine. Saying to myself, it's fine, I don't need to do too much more obsessing on the edge, but I'm going to, anyways. Okay, so that's the shape I like because it's a strong tip, it's not straight, it's arched, which makes it strong, it's not too thin down here. So, final answer and final measurements. Let me see why this part one inch. Almost exactly, which is good. That's what I like. Uh, the length, 2 and 3 sixteenths. Anything 2 inches or more is good. And the width, or the thickness, 3 sixteenths. Right, right. So I think 3 sixteenths will work. Um, 9 30 seconds is, um, let me see here. How many 30 seconds is that? I think that's 8 30 seconds. So 9 30 seconds is uh, just a little bit more. No, that's not right. 11, we're looking for 11 30 seconds for shaft width diameter. Shaft diameter, just to give you an idea, that's 11 30 seconds, I believe. Um, no, yeah. One thirty second less than three eighths. Three eighths is um, twelve thirty seconds. So one thirty second less. So just to give you an idea of how much we got room, see that we got some room. So this is a little bit less than three sixteenths down here. So this is going to be this is where the shaft goes up to about there. That is one, two, three, four, five thirty seconds. Okay, so we have enough. Um, that means it's three thirty seconds on each side. There's enough wood there. Three thirty seconds of an inch of wood on that side and that side, which is good. I think it's good. All right, so there it is. Hunting point design. I might put more of an, a notch down in here. I 
I don't know. I think that's a good, now the weight. Before I forget, because I will forget. Come on. Don't tell me I need batteries already. 114, 112, what is it? 114, all right. So I'm gonna look back on the video and see how much the notching and the final sharpening took its toll. Let's see, this, this is 114 grain. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Okay. So, yeah, I'm going to do other things today, but I just wanted to get one of these out of the way as a warm-up for what I need to do the rest of the day. So, there you go. Let's see. I need a thumbnail shot. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get it so that it shows up. Both notches show up good. Yeah. Okay, that's it.